Well, we only had one casualty. Oh, no! You could have saved his life. I think we're going to defer on this ramp and go to the Kirkpatrick Dam boat ramp. This is the uh, Rodman Dam or Kirkpatrick Dam boat ramp right at the dam. And uh, much better idea than what we looked at over the Johnson Field ramp. So, Well, we're here to do the last and final phase of the Ocklawaha River. We're going to do it from the Kirkpatrick or Rodman Dam to the St. Johns River and then maybe go up the St. Johns River to the Cross Florida Canal and look at the lock and see what the failed uh, idea was to come across Florida with that canal. Uh, we don't know really what's in store. We've asked two people who I thought might be experts on the river here at the boat ramp and they said, we've never gone that far. You know, the one thing that uh, can really help us out is to hit that subscribe button on the channel. And uh, we're really getting a lot of new subscribers here in the last couple weeks and we certainly appreciate it. So we're off to have a great day. We'll bring you along. That sort of shows you how the river when it's dammed. Hey, so this is the Rodman Reservoir and the Kirkpatrick Dam that we've been talking about in this three-part series. The wild Okalawaha River used to run through that main body of water. And this, of course, is the dam. And this is my view on the east side of the river. Well, Walt, you ready for this adventure? I'm ready, buddy. It's a floating log. Did you hit it? Yeah, I hit it. I mean, I don't think I did any damage. We'll see. That's a hazard, though. So as you can see, the hazards start before you even leave the man-made canal on the other side of the dam, hitting that floating log. Just good luck. Anyway, no damage to the ski, so that's wonderful news. The river poses lots of subjective hazards, just like the leg from Silver Springs to Fort McCoy. A lot of fallen trees, tree stumps, and you need to pick your way through there very carefully. I think we were lucky this day because the water was being released at a really good rate from the dam. So the water level was between, oh, anywhere from seven to 12 feet, uh, all the way down the middle of the river. How you doing? All right, how y'all? Good. This is the main river, right? Yeah, it is. I'm low. Oh. I'm going to the dam. That's the dam. That's to the St. John. So obviously safety on this river has a lot to do with the water release rate from the dam itself on any given day. Keep that in mind on the day that you run this river. A chart plotter with a map is helpful, but navigation is not too difficult. Just keep an eye out for those tributaries because they will trip you up. You can see that in the return video where I almost made two wrong turns. Okay, we are close to the canal. It's just up here around the bend. Well, we only had one casualty. My hat. So this is a man-made canal that was created to do the Cross Florida Canal. All right. So we're gonna go up and there's a lock up there that actually still works, but we're not gonna go through it. Okay. We're not gonna hit it or anything? Try not to hit it. Yeah.
That was pretty uh, <laughs> bumpy coming across the St. John. arguments on either side of it but remember it was a bad idea to begin with that created this dam so as always thanks for coming along on this trip and this three-part journey of the Akawaha River take care and we'll see you along next time I saw a taco truck. I saw that too. I have five dollars in cash. I'm sure they don't take credit cards. Do you have more than five dollars? Well, you, I bet you can get at least one taco for five dollars. Yeah, one taco. Right. Well, that's our only hope, right? That's our only hope. <laughs> that's our only hope. Okay. We probably can find a little bit more cash if necessary. All right. Hey, Walt's got cash. So I got the Little Deb's special with cucumber salad. What did you get, Walt? I got a pulled pork with some potato wedges. Potato wedges.